You know, I've been thinking about this for some time now, and I've obviously talked about it here and there over the offseason, but it's what I want to actually see from the Chicago Bulls team this season. I don't mean that strictly from a win-loss perspective, how the team shows up as a whole, but all the individual pieces that go into it as well, and what I would deem for the season to be considered a success. But let's be real, the Bulls aren't going to be competing for anything. They're not going to be making a deep run in the playoffs, so how do you end this season and call it a win given the circumstances they find themselves in? Well, let's dive into it further in this video. So what's going on everyone? You're listening to Bull Central here. Hope you're all doing well. Now look, I know this is a channel about basketball, specifically the Chicago Bulls, and while you guys know I don't follow the NFL that much because I can only handle one sport at a time with all the other stuff I've got going on in my life, but I know all of you Bears fans are super hyped for this upcoming NFL season. The regular season is back. The Bears play their first First game on Sunday, everyone is going crazy over Caleb Williams, even I myself have been getting in on the madness, and so why do I bring this up? Well, it brings me to the sponsor of this video, Prize Picks, and Prize Picks is doing an insane offer right now where one Caleb Williams passing yard gets you one win on Prize Picks every week in September. That's right, only one yard gets you an automatic win every football weekend in September. Four weeks of free Ws. Don't miss that deal on Prize Picks because it's going to be gone by the end of September. For those that aren't familiar with Prize Picks, it is the best place to get real money sports action, the most fun and exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. It's pretty simple. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your money. Run your game all season long on Prize Picks. But not only that, if you sign up today, you'll get $50 instantly when you play five dollars you don't need to win to receive the 50 dollars bonus it is guaranteed so for my picks this week which again i am by no means an nfl expert you guys know that but i've obviously got to go with our guy caleb williams when it's only one yard taking more on that and uh, i'm also going to take the more on james connor so download the app today use the promo code bull central to get 50 dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup i'll leave a link to the site and the code in the description now i've talked about this before but when i take a look at the roster as currently constructed obviously we know things can change between now and opening night but as they stand right now this team isn't bad enough to truly be in the running for some of the top prospects in the 2025 draft namely cooper flag but they're also not good enough to really make any kind of meaningful noise in the postseason essentially you're probably going to see the bulls around where they were last year yes they lost their best player, the guy who closed out many games in the clutch when the bulk of the Bulls' wins last season were in the clutch, and you also lost your best defender, two-time all-defensive team player, and also one of your best three-point shooters. At the same time, though, the Bulls also gained a very savvy floor general and playmaker in Josh Giddy. They added some decent young pieces in Jalen Smith, Chris Duarte, moves on the margins to give them a little more depth. And as great as DeMar was in carrying this team to so many wins last season, you could also argue that his style of play and slowing down the overall offense and playing mainly iso ball in the half court was a detriment to the Bulls' desire to play fast as well as limiting opportunities for others. So while I don't doubt that the Bulls are more than likely going to be worse than they were last season, although it wouldn't shock me if they were somehow better either because we never know with this team, but this is going to be a very different team in terms of the style of play than we saw last Last season. They've gotten a lot younger, they're going to be playing much faster in transition, the ball is going to be moving a lot more, and there's going to be much more opportunity for the young guys to showcase what they can do. That said, their defense is going to be considerably worse, probably bottom five in the league, and their three-point shooting, which has never really been that good, is going to dip even further when you exchange one of your best three-point shooters on the team last season for a guy whose biggest weakness is his shooting. And then, of course, they drafted Manus Bucellis, whose shooting is a big question mark. Vooch can't shoot to save his life, but I don't know. That said, if Lonzo can come back and shoot like he used to, even if it's not the same volume, because he won't be getting those kind of minutes, and then Zach, if he's back healthy, Kobe, Io, they still still shot the ball very well last year hell even Patrick Williams and now they've got a playmaker who can find the open man better than the Bulls have ever had in the past so yeah actually I don't know maybe they'll be surprisingly decent as a shooting team I'll go back to what I said before though this is going to be the toughest season to predict how this team is going to show up in all facets of the game but as far as what I want to see and what I would consider the season to be a success come April is this first and foremost player development that has to be the ultimate priority and yes that means if the players are doing well, exceeding expectations, and dare I say it, winning games, even too many games, so be it. I know a lot of Bulls fans don't like to hear it. 
You can adamantly disagree with me on that, and that's totally fine. But if the guys are doing better than expected, the last thing I want to see is to have them start resting guys like Kobe, Ayo, Giddy, Patrick Williams, just so they can lose a few more games to try and keep their pick. Now, in an ideal world, and I'll be clear, I would absolutely love to see this, you would have the young guys develop, show progress from the prior season, show some true signs of future growth and potential, and at the same time, the Bulls would still be bad enough where they're able to keep their pick. And this isn't a prediction, or I'm saying that I believe this is going to happen, but say Patrick Williams has an insane breakout season. Say it's so good, he's playing at an all-star level. And because he's been so dominant, it's getting the Bulls more wins than they expected. You're telling me you would rather the Bulls hit the brakes and start resting Patrick Williams. Or you're telling me you would root for him to start playing like crap in the back half of the season so the Bulls can keep their pick for the luck of the draw and draft a player that might not pan out. Yeah, maybe the Bulls get lucky with a small chance at landing Cooper Flag, which would change everything for the trajectory of this franchise. But aside from that small chance, you would rather they try and slow the growth of Pat when he's having a breakout season. And again, I know this is incredibly hypothetical and so unlikely to happen, but I'm trying to explain the thought process here, the flawed thought process of those who believe the Bulls should try and keep their pick at all costs. No, not if it's to the detriment of your core young talent. Again, only if the young core is playing well and exceeding expectations. If they suck and they're disappointing, then whatever, lose as many games as possible and get the highest pick possible. And I know I use Patrick Williams as an example there, but the same can be said about guys like Kobe or Josh Giddy. or what if Modest hits the ground running and is impacting winning? You don't hit the pause button on a player's growth so you can lose a few more games to keep a draft pick. But anyway, player development, that is paramount for this upcoming season. I'm gonna see Josh Giddy have a bounce back season after last year with OKC, a revenge season where he makes the Thunder regret even moving from him in the first place. I wanna see him really work on that jump shot and prove his three point shooting where he becomes a consistent and reliable shooter from deep. No one is saying he needs to start shooting 40 plus percent from three, although that would be nice. Even 35, 36% on reasonable volume where it enables the Bulls to better space the floor. I wanna see at least some effort as well on the defensive end from Josh Giddy. I wanna see Kobe White take his game to the next level where not only is he becoming a reliable option on offense like we saw last season, but really being the main scoring option for the Bulls. Yes, the number one option on offense for the time being anyway, not saying he's gonna be the Bulls number one option that they build around. And yes, I'll get to Zach and Vooch in a bit and how they play into all this. I wanna see Manus Buzelis get consistent run, playing time and meaningful reps on the court. Even if he doesn't show up that well, makes mistakes on the court, gets pushed around here and there because he's a little too thin and not as polished as a player. That's all right. Have him learn from his mistakes, understand what it takes to make it in this league, getting in the weight room, working on that jumper, improving his defense. I want to see Modest get more rotational minutes than the Bulls probably have in mind for him. I would love to see him putting in 24, 26 minutes a game and seeing progression on his part from the start of the year to the end of it. Io, you know, I actually have very high expectations of Io and Patrick Williams, really. Uh, the Bulls need strong two-way players. In order for a team to truly be great in the NBA, you need high-level two-way players. Io has that potential. We saw it last year, especially at the end of last season, when he was putting up 20 points per game like it was nothing, hitting threes, driving to the basket, improved handles, but also being a lockdown defender on the perimeter. He has the tools to be that guy. I want to see him harness it and go even further in being that rising star, and also filling that void on defense that they're losing in Alex Caruso. And then the same goes for Patrick Williams. I mean, we've been talking about Pat's potential for years, and when we're going to see that breakout year that we've all been waiting for. This is the year of no more excuses for Patrick Williams. You're gonna get more opportunity now with the Bulls pivoting to a youth movement. There's not gonna be as much pressure, at least in terms of the Bulls' expectations to win. You're gonna have a bigger role on offense. You don't have to worry about your contract anymore. You got paid. Time to show up now. This is your fifth year in the league. You're 23 now, no more excuses. This is your time to show us that you really can be a great player in this league. And then finally, addressing the elephant in the room in terms of the three players that all have question marks around them and their futures with this team, Zach, Vucevic, and yes, even Lonzo Ball. Here's the thing. I'm going to try to address all three of these together because they all have the same outlook in terms of what I want to see from them in this upcoming season. Ideally, all three are traded by the deadline. Now, absent of Lonzo Ball coming back fully healthy and back to the player he, we saw in 2021, then no, you keep Lonzo and use him as a piece for the future, although it completely complicates things now with Giddy on the roster unless you're solely losing Lonzo as a spot-up shooter going forward. But Lonzo, coming back 100% and fully healthy, is so unlikely that I think the best-case scenario for the Bulls is he comes back, plays decently well enough that they may get some value for him on the trade market at the deadline. It's not going to be much because every team is going to be wary of his future health. 
But as far as Zach and Vooch are concerned, look, I get there is a world where Zach Levine without DeMar and now adding Josh Giddy, maybe a healthy Lonzo Ball, there is a world where Zach thrives in that environment and the Bulls see a renewed Zach Levine. I get that. But if that happens and Zach starts balling out, you use that to your advantage and you trade the man. It's time to move on. Because even if things do work out for Zach and he plays well, he doesn't suddenly make you a contender. He's not going to put you over the top and he doesn't fit the timeline around what the Bulls are doing anymore. Zach is going to be turning 30 this season. So no, what we need to see is Zach traded by the deadline and hopefully they can get some kind of value for him in return if he is able to display that he's still a great player that can contribute. And then for Vucevic, I mean, the man needs to be traded because he simply put doesn't make sense for the Bulls anymore. I just don't know that the Bulls are going to be able to trade him. It would be one thing if you could use Vuce as like this veteran leader and mentor for the young guys where he still has value in keeping him around, but he's not that guy. So the Bulls should actually be looking to trade Vooch as their number one priority, even over someone like Zach Levine. And if they're able to trade Vucevic prior to the deadline, great. So in short, what I need to see from the Bulls this season, player development, seeing big jumps in play from guys like Pat, Josh Giddy, Manus Buzelis, Io, and Kobe. Ideally, the Bulls focusing on development and being a fun team to watch, but still hopefully bad enough to keep their pick, if that's even possible. But if it is, that is the best possible outcome. And then trading Vucevic, Levine, and Lonzo by the deadline. Walking away from the season where the Bulls aren't good from a standings perspective, but you can see that they've got something going. They've got some things to be excited about as a team that will bring them right back into the mix in the near future. Just my take on the matter. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments. As always, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.